back. This year, we are trying to work smarter and not harder. And so we're going to give a series of helpful hints to you um, just to help you streamline some of the stuff, the procedures you do and to reduce some of the workload. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about adding, uh, creating assignments within Schoology by using assessments. So I'm in my Schoology page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add materials. I'm going to go to add assessment. And then I'm going to name and I'm going to name it um, homework. Number one, you want to be more specific than that, but we're trying to do this um, in a concise kind of way. I want to make sure I add a date because if I add a date, it will provide a reminder in Schoology for the students that easily allows them to easily assess, um, access that particular assignment. Now, when you're doing an assessment in Schoology, the Schoology always defaults to disabling the submission so the students can't submit anything, even if they can see it. You want to go here. If it's just like an assignment, just regular assignment, enable it because that means that they can see it immediately and they can submit their answers immediately. I'm going to add a category. And um, here's one of the key things right here. If you have students that you uh, select students you want to give this to, you can individually assign. This is one of the thing, ways that you can um, notate that you are uh, accommodating a student. So maybe you're giving them some other um, um, exercise that they need to do to help them understand, or you're giving them an extension exercise. So you can um, add this and individually assign. As if you click on this, it's going to ask you who you're assigning it to. Um, and then you can notate that in wherever you're documenting your accommodations. So now it defaults to uh, this page right here. Now we're going to go through the settings real quickly. You should make sure that you spend a little time e examining these and selecting settings that you wish. Like for one, I, in an asynchronous situation, I do not want to put a time limit. I don't. Um, I don't really care about randomizing it. Um, and um, and I don't really care about them showing points of, uh, of how many each question is worth at this point. But I do care about the rest. This assessment toolbar, what will happen is when the students are able to answer the question, they're going to have a toolbar that um, will have certain tools for them, options for them that you select down here. I want students to be able to flag their questions. This is a great test taking strategy because I tell students, do not waste your time on questions that you do not know. Skip it and come back to it. And a good way of making sure they come back to it is allowing them to flag that question. Also, I want them to eliminate answer choices. So this is a great test taking strategy. I use it myself in everything that I do that has multiple choice. If you have uh, calculations or require rulers or protractors, you can indicate that here. Um, another thing I want to do, I want the students to be able to have access to. I like to have it when they have the hard copies of stuff that they highlight and underline and circling keywords and stuff. Well, when you're on online, you don't have that option. So instead, I want to make sure that they have access to a highlighter. Everyone's not going to use it, but we I, I want to I would train them into using this online, uh, especially when it's long passages. Uh, and then also I'm going to enable the notepad. Many people want to use it, but there may be a student who does like that. Now, the next two things are kind of important. Do you want the students to see their work before they submit it? I always do. I want them to be able to review their information. I don't want them to um, to see correct answers, though. So I want them to be able to access and when they go back in, they should see what they uh, they initially chose. And if you want them to have more than one attempt, um, then you can select a different time frame. Right now, I like to start with one and see what happens. So I save that. And before I go to the questions, I'm going to go back up here. If you want to, um, I like this part right here, because if I have an, if it's just an assignment, um, I want to add a video. I want to add something else that addresses a different modality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to um, to uh, YouTube. I found a video. I'm going to go down to share. And what I want to grab is the embed code. So once again, I went to share. And I grabbed the embed code and then I copied it. OK, so now I'm going to go back to my Schoology page. And I am going to go to this box here. It says insert content. It's like a rectangle with a, a arrow going in. I'm going to go to image and media from the web because I got this from the web. It's not an image. It's actually a video. It's media. And I'm going to paste that in. So I pasted my embed code for my video in here. And it gives me this yellow blotch. 
That's good. That means something's there. I'm also going to write, be as explicit as possible and write instructions. Uh, I want them to watch the video first. Then answer the questions that follow. And because I have all these options for my text um, box, I'm going to actually um, increase my font so that it's bigger. <laughs> I don't like the small size. And I want people to be able to see it. And I want to fold this because I want you to know these are your instructions. <laughs> and so what I'll do is I go down to the bottom and I'll save. Next, I need to add a question. So I want you to look at these choices over here. You have all these different types of, of uh, uh, question types. We're going to do the easy, tried and true, quick, I can get this done real quickly kind of thing. I'm going to choose some multiple choice, but there will be some sub subsequent videos that's going to go into how to create these question types also. But today, just a multiple choice. So I'm going to click on multiple choice. <clears throat> And I have this box here. So when I, um, it's going to show me this, but I quick, can click here. I can type in a question if I want, and then I can um, put the answer choices down here and type them. Or I can do instead my lazy route. <laughs> I have, I'm going to actually uh, use some um, star release EOC questions. And I'm just going to upload the picture of them. And then I'm going to have, it's going to be easily done. So what I can do is, I have already ha um, saved some of my questions on my hard drive. So I'm going to go all the way over in this toolbar to the image icon. And it's going to ask me to locate this, this um, image. So I'm going to go here. Here's a question. I, don't really, I haven't really paid attention to what the questions are. It doesn't matter in this case because I'm not going to answer them. And it, it looks like this. Now, this is massive. If I wanted to, I can go down and, and change the size, lower the size. But I don't care right now. <laughs> So um, I can go in and change this, the size or I can keep it as is and press OK. Now, <clears throat> instead of me typing any of this in, <laughs> I'm going to go in and put A, put B, put C, and put D. And then I'm going to go and put the answer. I'm, I haven't looked at the question, but let's assume it's B. I've created a key. And anything in school that you create a key for, it will grade for you. OK, so and down here, I'm going to go and attach a, a T, my T. So I'm going to go to State Standards, Texas. This is uh, Essential Knowledge and Skills. I want to find my the most current science. And this is from biology. I have a lot of stuff in biology, so I tend to do things in biology. Um, I'm going to go down to the ticks that it is. I think it was a virus, so I think it's not C. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down and confirm. And now my ticks is at the bottom. You want to make sure for every question that you attach a ticks to it. That, uh, that way you can go back and review the data with it. And I'm saving it. So now I have one multiple choice question. I'm going to go preview it. This is how it looks to the students. First, it shows the video right there. Allows them to look at the video, then they can start their attempt. And there's the question, and there's where they choose their answer. And all I have to do is I can go in and create another one by choosing multiple choice again, doing the same thing I did before, picking the image, finding my um, question. This one with different teeks too. Input, importing it, altering the size as I want to. Going down, put A, B, C, uh -oh, C, or D. Great, uh, create my key, C. Adding my teaks. That this may be the thing that takes the longest because you got to kind of go through all these. Um, I don't remember what what this. I think the sales cycle, so it should be five. It's, it it doesn't matter for these cases, but since I know I'm trying to make sure I put the right thing, <laughs> um, and then I can go down 
I confirm it. It should have my ticks right there. I save it. Now, when I go back in and preview it, I should see both questions. I see my video first. I love the video aspect because just in case this is a different modality to present the information in. So if by chance they you've seen another video or you had a lecture or you had them write read something, you can upload um, uh, some kind of um, active reading here also. You 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 present it in different forms for different students. Start. This is how the grade it looks. I go to the next one. This is how the second one looks. Once my students do this. I can go in and I can grade it by question or I can grade it by the student. Um, so every student that um, I have, I can actually click on them and, and actually grade their work. I can generate a report. There's so many different things that I'm able to do with Schoology. I love many aspects of Schoology um, and, and it's already there. So it's, accessible, it's ready for the students when, because um, um, I have to make sure it's in here. Hold on a second. Here he goes, homework number one. Homework number one, and uh, you can't see it from the student view yet, but it's there. And it, if I can submit it to the students, they can answer the questions and it's graded for them. Okay, this was one of your, the first helpful hints. Um, I hope this helps, thank you.